In this episode of Cloud Performance Atlas, I help some thankful developers come to term with resident instances. Is their performance cup half full or half empty? Stay tuned to find out. I was attending a meetup last week where I was approached by some developers at a company called Think Thanks, a uh, nonprofit whose goal is to improve the quality and frequency of thanks given to people and organizations. They were a great group of folks who built their service on App Engine and had already done all of the cold boot optimization that we could possibly talk about. Still, they were seeing issues when sudden traffic came in. Their problem was that the app traffic was extremely bursty. They would go from zero users for hours to suddenly thousands. And in those situations, instances were legitimately being cold booted, causing a delay in overall performance while that instance was being created. The latency of think thanks was taking considerable hit anytime a new instance was being booted up. So besides just adjusting the scheduler to boot up less instances, it looks like they needed something stronger to handle sudden spikes in traffic. There was really only one thing left to suggest to them resident instances. As I talked about before, the app engine serving algorithms are constantly deciding on whether it's better to queue a request or spin up a new instance. This takes into account a significant number of factors to decide when this should happen. If your cold boot time is significant, then during extreme spikes in traffic, request latency will suffer as those requests sit longer in the work queue before being serviced. This could flood your application with a huge amount of startup costs and delay the entire system significantly. This is where resident instances come in. A resident instance is one that stays alive 24 seven and only receives traffic under a very specific situation while a new instance is booting up. Uh, basically, resident instances are spare instances. While a new instance is booting up, they handle the excess load that the new instance would be handling. Once it's up and running, the traffic is sent to the new instance and the resident one can go back to waiting around, which is really important because it means that user requests won't be subject to sudden spikes in latency that come from cold boot performance which is exactly what I saw when we changed the min idle instances flag of think thanks to one. Once the new request load came in, it was handled by the existing instance so that latency didn't shoot through the roof while the new one was booting up. The takeaway, resident instances are the key to rapid scale and not having your user perception of latency be impacted. But after playing around with resident instances a bit, think thanks noticed that there seemed to be a plus one tax involved in situations where traffic was lower than normal. Basically, if no one had been using their application for a while, a sudden burst would cost two instances, the idle instance as well as the new instance being spun up. But for infrequent traffic, that really wasn't what they needed. Think Thanks was wasting an instance. An alternative solution came from a Google Plus post where a community member described a similar problem. His startup process might take multiple seconds in order to fill a database, but rather than using resident instances, he created and used a cron job to ping the instance and keep it alive indefinitely. When we tried this on Think Thanks, we saw pretty much what we expected. In the lowest volume setting, this setup allowed their backend to keep from spawning a new instance when it didn't need to. Happy with their latency improvement, the Think Thanks folks finished their meetup provided pizza and went happily along their way. Afterwards, I talked to a few App Engine experts who wanted to make it very clear that there's two very distinct and separate use cases here. If you have a high frequency, lots of instance churn scenario and a slow cold boot time, then resident instances are your best bet. However, if you have a low frequency traffic with occasional bursts in a slow cold boot time, then keeping an always cron instance around is ideal since you can handle the initial traffic load gracefully with a lower number of total instances. The downside to both of these situations is that these persistent instances come at a cost. You're basically paying for an instance to be alive 24 seven, which could add significant costs to your operating budget, which is why I like to say that you should always carefully balance your trade-offs before making decisions to go forward with any performance improvements. And to understand what types of trade-offs there are, make sure to check out the rest of the Google Cloud Atlas videos, because when it comes to your users, every millisecond counts.